82 degrees of awesomeness. <laughs> That's how I call my latest set of eyepieces. The Angel Eyes 82 degrees 4mm, 7mm and 16mm. What is Angel Eyes? It's just a brand, just a label. What really matters is who makes these eyepieces. These eyepieces are made by Kung Ming United Optics, also known as Kuo. We have covered them in the past on the Skyrover eyepiece. Their main factory brand is Skyrover, which is known for absolute uh, great quality at a nice price. What typically they do, they sell these eyepieces also under many different brands. If you go on their website, you can see that they actually package these based on other labels uh, requirements and sure enough you will find them under many different names so literally you can find them under 10 different names they are all the same eyepieces a little bit different price i chose angel eyes because they are the absolute cheapest ones that you can find and to be honest they look kind of nice uh, with the red design with nice grip you will have a look uh, later on at the close-ups the most well-known brands that are being sold of these eyepieces are the Skywatcher Nirvana and also Skyrover itself. So what is this whole thing about 82 degrees of eyepiece? If you're new to astronomy, probably you have gotten something like a cheap lossal with your telescope. In that case, the field of view, the apparent field of view is around 50 degrees. And if I show you on this example, and later we will see how it looks in real life on the moon, you will see that 50 degrees compared to 82 degrees, it's a huge difference. It's just 30 degrees, but in actuality, when you compare it uh, to the surface area that you're seeing in the sky, it's 2.5 times more sky at the same time, same magnification. Obviously, these typically include also better optics, so it will be a little bit the image sharper, cleaner, Platter. it's really really nice when you have a nice 82 degrees eyepiece they also make 100 and 110 degree eyepieces but these are way too expensive and i don't know at, at that point you just don't even see the edges and i'm not sure it's really worth the effort i did get the chance to observe once with an apm 100 degrees it was nice i'm not sure it's 200 dollars more nice <laughs> because these they cost something like 80 85 dollars per piece depends on what kind of coupon you use on aliexpress and where do you live in europe i have to pay 20 percent tax now what are the downsides of eyepieces of such wide field of view well as with everything there are some downsides typically the eye relief is a little bit worse if you are wearing glasses most likely you will not be able to use these eyepieces also in telescopes like mine, f5, f4, these will typically need a comma corrector, at least the 16mm one. Without comma corrector, it gets really nasty with all the comma outside uh, towards the edges. And of course the price, <laughs> yeah. Uh, while you can get a plosser for as cheap as 10, 15 dollars, you can even get some uh, a little bit wider fields for like 30 dollars. These, the cheapest ones, as I mentioned, cost around 80 dollars per piece. Whether that's worth it for you, it depends entirely up to you. For me, obviously, it was worth it, especially now that I got my 12-inch uh, Dobsonian. But I was quite happy without them as well, to be very honest with you. Yeah, it's been three years I've been observing with uh, 60, 70-degree uh, eyepieces. It's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. It's more about taking it to that next extra level where you are just pushing things to the limit and enjoying the maximum out that you can get out of your telescope. That's all there is to it. It's about pushing that extra 10-20% remaining. I also have here my nice SV Boni SV191 Zoom. I will use this as a reference eyepiece. Nice eyepiece for also around $70-$80 dollars to show you on the moon the difference between the excellent 82 degrees of view and the more modest, I'd say 40-60 to 60 field of view which you typically find in the majority of eyepieces on the market without further ado let's get down to business and see what's inside these nice little boxes i'm going to start with the best of the three that is the seven millimeter angelized eyepiece let's see what's inside of the box 
Typically it comes in a bit of a bubble wrap, but I of course took it all out. Comes with a nice cleaning cloth, pretty useless to be honest. And the eyepiece itself. I really like the quality of the caps it comes with. Nice rubber caps, they are not going to get lost or get hard over time. Nothing too special to write home about. The eye guard, of course, it can be flipped down in case you use uh, glasses. I don't know. I have no idea if you can see anything through this eyepiece with glasses. You will have to test that yourself. I would say probably not. I've been using this eyepiece now for at least two months and I've been very, very, very happy with it. To be honest, when I bought it, I was just testing it out. It was my first eyepiece I bought from the set. I was like, let's give it a try. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. I had place in my bag for one more eyepiece. And I was so positively surprised with this eyepiece that it became really my favorite one to use. I'm using it all the time now when I'm out there observing. 7mm in my telescope with a comma corrector. It comes down to 1.1, 1.2mm of exit pupil. Keep in mind, this 7mm is actually not correct. The correct focal length of this eyepiece is actually 8mm and it applies to all the brands that we covered before, which is actually good because 7 is a bit too much magnification for my 12 inch F5 Dobsonian. 8 is really, really nice. The eye relief is very, very nice. It's better than the Explore Scientific 11mm uh, Max Vision that I covered before. I really like it because my eyelashes are not touching the glass and that's really, really very comfortable. On the Max Vision, my eyelashes touch the glass. Sometimes it gets um, fogged up because my eye is too close to the glass. It's not ideal. But in this case, I really, really love using it. The field of view of what I'm being told is actually 84 degrees and not even 82, which seems to be realistic. When I look at it, I can barely see the edges. And obviously observing the moon with this nice eyepiece is just a major, major blast. But typically I use it for all kinds of um, uh, deep sky objects, the M13s, the M92s uh, in the sky. They look really amazing with this one. It just explodes it into view. And even if you go into something like double clusters, the Perseus double cluster, you can really enjoy a field of stars in just one single eyepiece. The design based on manufacturer's uh, details is seven elements in four groups. I am not going to open it and test it out. Believe me, with these difficult, uh, complex designs, never ever open an eyepiece. Yeah, it, it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it seems well corrected. It's pretty heavy. They say around 200 grams, which feels pretty realistic. I really like how it feels in my hands. This rubber here is really amazing. I mean, yeah, these are details, but when it comes to eyepieces, these are important details. What you need to have from an eyepiece is this comfortable feeling that it's nice, comfy, comfy, and you just forget it's in the telescope. That's really the best quality of an eyepiece. You simply forget it's there. The edges are well corrected. In this case, it's almost perfect, especially with a comma corrector and you just enjoy the view. I mean, long story short, if you're going to get one of these eyepieces, make sure it's a 7mm. In my view, it's really the best of all three, and we will see why when I cover the next two eyepieces. Next, we go with my second favorite one, the 16mm Angel Eyes. Again, nothing surprising in the box. Same box, really nice box. You get the same cups, everything is the same. To be honest, maybe it's too much the same because then when I touch them in the darkness, I can never see which is which. It might have been maybe nice to put something, some kind of rubbers where you can feel out the different eyepieces based just on the grip. But yeah, I'm just nitpicking here. Again, the eyepiece looks really nice. Uh, they tell me again it's seven elements in four groups, but right on I can see it's a little bit uh, smaller here. It's because of the bigger um, focal length. In this case, this eyepiece 
The actual field of view is exactly 82 degrees based on measurements done by others. The correction, yeah, it gets tricky. It gets tricky. Without a comma corrector in my F5 12 inch, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's basically useless. It's just too messed up, yeah? <laughs> Too much aberrations around the edges, not even the edges, I mean it's like 30% uh, of the field is just messed up with aberrations, astigmatism and comma in my F5 without a comma corrector, yeah? Now when I put a comma corrector in, and you can check the previous video on how to get a cheap, nice comma corrector for under $100 and set it up properly, it really starts to shine, it becomes again one of my favorite eyepieces. Let me tell you, observing the double Perseus cluster in this eyepiece, it's a real treat. I do it every time I go out. Today I will go observe the moon and shoot some video for the eyepieces. Again, I have to see the double cluster, it's really amazing. It's also a nice target to test eyepieces. You see a lot of stars across the entire field and you are really able to see any kind of inconsistencies there. So when I put a comma corrector in, it's really nice, yeah? Still there is some astigmatism in the last 10-15 uh, uh, degrees, but yeah, it, it's nothing too drastic. For this price, I mean, what do you want, yeah? <laughs> Maybe if you spend 200 more dollars on some other premium design, you will have perfect view, but in this case, it's nice. Still, it's not as great as the 7mm, the 7mm just blows everything out of the water, it's nice even without a comma corrector. This one is a bit more tricky. On the other hand, I had no eyepiece in this range, so I wanted something which allows me this uh, a little bit lower magnification. Because the next low magnification I have is the Sky Rover 30mm, it's just 70 degrees. It's nice, but it's a bit too low on the low end. All in all, I'm happy with this one, I'm using it all the time, so probably it's good if I'm using it all the time. Would I recommend it? Definitely. But if you have an F5 telescope and lower, only with a comma corrector. In F6, should be okay, but still, yeah, I would prefer to use this one with a comma corrector. And again, if I compare it to the SV Boni at 16mm zoom on the moon, again, here the difference is even bigger because the zooms, they get a lower field of view towards the lower magnifications. It's just absolutely amazing the difference of 82 degrees versus something like 45 to 50 of the SV Boni zoom at this level. There are some aberrations here, but of course you don't see them with the eyes. This is just from the cell phone. Ultra wide eyepieces are really not the best for cell phone photography. <laughs> I'm using the wide field camera of my cell phone and still it has trouble capturing the entire field of view. That's how big it is. All right now, you know what they say, I saved the best for the last. In this case, no, <laughs> I saved the worst for the last. The four millimeter angel eyes. What is there to say? The eyepiece on the outside looks identical to the other two. Why do I consider it to be the worst? It has nothing to do with the eyepiece. The eyepiece is actually very, very nice, amazing, sharp. 82 degrees of view, Saturn looks amazing into it, yeah, nothing wrong with the eyepiece itself at all. The problem is it costs $80. If I take a Barlow too, put this 8mm inside the Barlow, I get the same view, yeah, so <laughs> if I already have the 7mm, which is actually 8mm, I get a Barlow too, cheap Barlow, SV Boni, like $15. I put it in a Barlow, it's the same view, the same view. I did some testing, this one, uh, this one with a Barlow, the 8mm with a Barlow, compared to the 4mm, I could not see any difference on Saturn. Maybe I'm just bad, maybe I'm just old, maybe my eyes are just not good anymore. I just didn't see any difference. Hard as I looked, it's the same view. So why did I even buy it? I bought it because I have a YouTube channel, <laughs> it's that simple. I just wanted uh, for you guys to see all the three eyepieces in the same spot. They look kinda nice, it's a nice collection. And the second reason is more practical, it's because I bought a comma corrector. Uh, with the comma corrector spacing is very tricky, if you put a Barlow in the comma corrector, 
yeah, things get really messed up. You introduce chromatic aberrations, things like that. So from this point of view, it was nice. Now I have basically retired my Barlows. I was like, the channel is making a little bit of money. Why just I don't spoil myself, yeah? <laughs> I am all for being budget-oriented, but when you have the means and you can introduce a little bit of comfort into your observation, why not? Why not? So now I just use this uh, directly to observe the planets. It's really, really nice for the planets. Same like the other two eyepieces, you have seven elements in four groups, nothing to write home about, well corrected. Also at this magnification, coma is no longer an issue at all. You are lucky to be seeing anything in this magnification because of seeing. All in all, nice eyepiece. I don't use it too much because I'm not your typical planetary observer. I just observe a few minutes on the planet. But today I'm making an outreach for my uh, neighborhood here to observe Saturn and the Moon. And I'm pretty sure we will use the 4mm and they will be pretty happy with the huge view that they will see. And Saturn in all its glory. And when Jupiter comes around uh, in a couple of months, again, I'm pretty sure this will be my main used eyepiece. All in all, if you have the money, if you want some comfort in your observation and you don't like using Barlow's, by all means, buy it. If you're somebody who wants to save some money and you don't mind playing around with the Barlow's and you don't have a comma corrector anyway, then yeah, by all means, just get the 8mm, get yourself a cheap Barlow and you will have two eyepieces for the price of one, basically. Yeah. <laughs> There you have it. This concludes the last video that I'm going to make on eyepieces for quite a while because I graduated to whole 82 degrees. There is one last step that maybe one day I will make that is 100 degrees and 110 degrees. But even when buying from Skyrover, you're talking about $330 per eyepiece. And that's a little bit too pricey for me. It's just the advantage is no longer there because anyway, the last 15 uh, degrees of view, you can barely see it with your peripheral vision is just too much money for too little gain when you go from 82 to 100 or 110. I also truly have the feeling that I've said anything that I can possibly say about eyepieces, especially to a budget oriented astronomer. Feel free to check out my other videos oriented around eyepieces and Barlow's. And that will be pretty much it for this topic. My goal is not to be a YouTuber with 500 videos. My goal is to be a YouTuber with 50 videos of high quality that will stay there for years to come for any new beginner to discover them. I still have some videos which I really, really want to make. I want to show you the best books that I have discovered about astronomy, best software that you can use again about astronomy. I also want to cover some of the myths of the Dobsonian telescopes which prevent people from buying a Dobsonian. And lastly, I will speak about the beauty of visual observation compared to astrophotography. These are four videos that I really want to make. After that, <laughs> maybe I take a break. We will see. Until then, have a great day, have a great night. Click like, click subscribe and we will see what comes next time. Over and out, bye Astrophilts.